Greensboro, Winston-Salem. And now, TV8 Eyewitness News with the team you know and trust. Good evening. Word from Richmond late today that the 4th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals has overturned the convictions of the Wilmington 10 and sent the case back to the district court level in North Carolina. The nine black men and one white woman were found guilty in connection with racial unrest in Wilmington back in 1971. Now their convictions have been overturned. We'll have more on that story tonight at 11. Governor Hunt has declared his intention to fight in the upcoming General Assembly for increased revenues to help maintain the state's road system. In his weekly Raleigh News Conference today, the governor stopped just short of endorsing the recommendations of a special study commission, which is worth. Police, by the way, are warning merchants and bankers to expect more of the same with the oncoming holiday season. A Winston-Salem boy is in fair condition this evening after he was hit by a car today. The accident occurred at the intersection of 25th and Jackson Streets in Winston-Salem. The boy was one in a group of students standing at a school bus stop. Witnesses say he crossed 25th Street in front of a stopped bus and stepped in front of a car which was traveling at least 35 miles an hour. The child's name has not been released pending further investigation. The driver of the car had not been charged as of this evening. Meg? A spokesman for an anti-Klan group says that plans for a conference in Greensboro this weekend have now been finalized. National Anti-Klan Conference Coalition spokesman Lewis Pitts told reporters at the Guilford County Governmental Plaza today that the anti-Klan education meeting would open at St. Mary's Catholic Church on Friday night and then move to the Carlotta Supper Club on Stamey Street on Saturday. The two-day conference will be made up mostly of workshops designed to educate participants on what the group sees as the danger of fascism in America. The Communist Workers' Party, by the way, is one of the members of that coalition. This winter's fuel assistance program may be helping some people, but there are also those who are literally being left out in the cold. Alexander Cooper reports that some of their stories are not only shocking, but tragic as well. I bought the life insurance so that should something happen to me, uh, my children would not have to go to the expense. That's the only thought I ever had when I bought the life insurance was to put me away at the time. And she further says she feels the way the state social service agencies are handling the fuel assistance program this time is a travesty, denying elderly people the money they need just to keep warm because they don't want their families to bear the burdens of their own funerals. We'll have more as the story develops further. In Ashboro, Alexander Cooper, TV8 Eyewitness News. Well, I must say, Frank, the weather's turning out to be more to our liking here. And not this morning, though, I don't think it's 21 degrees. Not, not early this morning. That is true. We have to say, in view of that, sneezing's greetings. It was 21 this morning. That was cold. It's going to stay cold. Not that cold tonight, but still clear. And to guarantee it, take a look at our confirming satellite picture. What that shows, of course, mostly clear skies, just some high, thin cirrus clouds over us. That's the way it's going to be tonight, allowing us radiational cooling once again, a Class A day we've had today, a duplicate tomorrow because this high, the main center of it is just east of Raleigh and Durham, has furnished us with a good day today and it'll do the same thing tonight and tomorrow for that matter. Almost dead calm winds tonight, clear skies, that means the heat will radiate out into space for a cold night, but in addition to all that, the air is quite dry, not moist. So. Add them all up, it adds up to about 28 degrees by daybreak. Well, at least that's 7 degrees warmer than we experienced this morning. But we're still sticking with that story. As the high moves to the east, our winds will shift, even starting tomorrow, for a very slow moderation. We're going to draw on some of this warm air out here. It's in the 70s, believe it or not, in eastern Colorado, and we're looking forward to a milder weekend. And yet, not many miles from that, as heavy snow in Wyoming, a Pacific powerhouse of a snowstorm in the Cascades, wet and windy in the west, especially California, but for us, just more Class A weather. From our weather book comes this word last evening. We mentioned that Paradise Ranger Station in the Washington Cascades, that's right about way up there, 
had 61 inches of snow on the ground as of last night. Now that's the place that also holds the record for the snowiest year in America's history. And it happened not long ago either, February 18th, 1971 to February 18th, 1972. One year when Paradise Ranger Station racked up a staggering total of 1,224 inches of snow. That's 102 feet of snow in one year. Santa Claus had no trouble finding it, but everybody else is still looking for it. Our crew is made up of mean elves. Map of the United States, along with a lot of snow. We need a snow plow at this point. 49 degrees and 44 degrees. There must be a temperature inversion because Boone is warmer than Asheville. Up and down, clear and cold tonight, mostly sunny tomorrow, 48 to 53 degrees. It's 47 in Charlotte right now. Our man says he found out why Santa Claus took up gardening, because he likes to ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Benny. Not a whole lot to look forward to tomorrow as far as our fish and game forecast goes. After, well, a fairly active late night, it goes all downhill from there. The graph really at the bottom of its peak around daylight, and they'll stay there until a slight peak at noon, and again, as you can see, just a little bit after sunset. You know, it might be a good day to get the firewood cut and the Christmas shopping finished in order to free your time for better hunting and fishing conditions, which are expected this weekend. Well, the attempted transcontinental flight of the balloon Super Chicken II ended today in southwest Kansas. The balloon forced to land because of a growing coat of ice on the 10-story envelope. Both pilots are in good condition, and the landing was a very soft one. The balloon, of course, lifted off early yesterday from a football field north of San Diego, California, in quest of the first transcontinental crossing of the U.S., with touchdown expected to be just northeast of Henderson area here in North Carolina, but I supported the mission just as severe storms had ended a similar attempt just last September. And we'll have more TV8 Eyewitness News for you following this word. Them never make it back across the doorstep. Tomorrow we'll talk about it. In High Point, Bobby Martin, TV8 Eyewitness News. And now here's Frank to tell us just how cold it's really going to get. Frank? Not as bad as this morning. It was 21 this morning. 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Look for sunshine. A chilly 32 degrees. Fred? Little degree helps. Thank you, Frank. From the Triads News Leader, that's TV8 Eyewitness News to this hour. Thank you for being with us. We'll be back with the latest following tonight's NFL game. ABC's World News Tonight is next on TV8.